Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. Let's go to where it's snowing right now. This is Snow Basin, Utah. That next wave of snow with this storm system is obviously there. It has moved into the Tetons and also it's moving into Colorado as well. But Snow Basin tonight, tomorrow morning, probably four to eight inches of new accumulation on the way. Let me take you to Alta. You can see the snow is there as well. Probably five, six, seven, eight inches tonight into tomorrow morning. Let me take you over to Colorado. This is Aspen Mountain. Snowing there lightly. It's just getting started. It'll snow through uh, the night into tomorrow morning as well in um, Colorado. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, what I'm seeing here this afternoon. So that's uh, the next wave of snow. And that'll continue into 111 for Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. Then the next storm system up brings in an Arctic front. That comes in 112 through 115, and that's going to bring strong orographic snowfall to many of the mountain ranges of the West and high snow ratios with exceptionally cold air. That'll drive up the, the snow efficiency in the atmosphere. We'll also deliver a jet blast 112 and 113 to Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado with uh, wind gusts anywhere from uh, 40 to 70 miles per hour, raking the high peaks in those three states. Um, and then there's another storm system potential and somewhat of a northwest flow pattern, north-northwest flow, from 116 to 119. So we'll cover all this today. Uh, the northeast, you've got uh, the next storm system up on deck for 112 to 113. That's a powerhouse storm system, not unlike the one you just had. Uh, 116, 117 storm looked really good this morning and yesterday in the updates that I had. But today the track has shifted this afternoon a little bit. So the numbers, my forecasts have gone down a little bit. But I'll show you all that in the update coming up. All right, let me take you back. I want to show you water vapor here this afternoon. So there's your western view. Um, so here's our big storm system moving through the interior. That's what brought that wave of snow back to Utah, the Tetons, and now into Colorado. And that will become that next powerhouse storm system for Chicago, for the Midwest, for the Northeast. Um, this I'll just point out, this storm system is not up next for us. It's going to move up to the north. But what it will do, the movement of these two lows will create a gap, will create a vacuum. And in between, we're going to rotate down. You can kind of see the line right here. We're going to rotate in this Arctic front. So the polar vortex, a little piece of it will break off up here. And the whole thing is going to spin down into the lower 48. So that's what will be a part of the next storm system. So the two of them will be together. Um, let me take you out to the east. So there's what's left of that uh, that big storm from 19110. Let me just mark it here. It's pretty obvious, um, but it's moving out now. Um, and then that next storm system here it is coming out of the Rockies. That will become that Midwest storm, and then it rolls up into the northeast. All right, let me show you what the forecast radar and satellite look like. So that's the current state of affairs. That shield, that arc of snow running through the Tetons, the Wasatch, and now into Colorado. On the back side, the Sierra will get swiped. And here comes the low. It's going to dive down into the four corners. And by the time we get into 112 in the morning, that low has moved out of Colorado and New Mexico. What you see dropping in here, that's the next storm system. That's the Arctic front. You can see the boundary. And that'll be the focal point for moisture delivery, orographics, and a very cold, uh, very cold air temperature contrast. Look at that by 112, 113 in the morning. So that then drops south of the Tetons and lines up perfectly with the Wasatch. That's where we're going to crank out some significant snowfall as a result of this. And heavy snow in parts of uh, um, Colorado as well. I don't think it's out of the question that on 112 and 113, with the kind of jet support we're going to get and this Arctic front that we're going to see, we could see snow squalls. Those, those brief blinding lines of snow that develop, um, those squalls. I think we could see that in Utah, and I think we could see it in Colorado, both days with the, the, these really high winds that we've got. All right, notice the backside. The main area of low pressure is going to come down through Oregon, where you're going to get blasted again on um, 111, 112, and 113 with heavy snow and blizzard conditions again. And then watch the low kind of pass through Shasta, Taos, or Tahoe and Mammoth, and then it makes its way into Utah. This is the main low now coming through into Utah and Colorado, and then the low sets up in Colorado and New Mexico, pulls the snow out of Utah by the end of the day on 114. And then it's just leftover snow on 115 in the morning in Colorado 
and by the end of the day, that low is gone. Now, the next storm system, the one for 116 to 119, you can see it coming south out of British Columbia. There's going to be good snow in BC, and there'll be good snow eventually when this drops in to Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. All right, let's talk jet setup. So actually, you know what? That's 115 on the future, uh, the forecast radar. Here's 117. This is what that storm will look like as it drops down from BC and Canada and see the snow in blue. Here's one more day. Here's 118. So this north-northwest flow sets up and it just crushes parts of, uh, of Montana and the Tetons and into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. We're going to tick up. We're going to add a lot of snow because of this, if this sets up this way. And there's some that kind of brushes the Wasatch. Not totally sure at this point how much we're going to get that far south or that far southwest into the uh, into the Wasatch, but uh, some at this point, some snow. All right, now let's talk about the jet setup. So tomorrow, powerful west-northwest type of flow with that jet um, amplified, bringing that cold air down. But you can see the trough over Colorado and New Mexico with that departing low. All right, here's 113. So co-location, northern branch, southern branch coming together of the jet, and you've got an area of low pressure. You can almost see it in Oregon right there. Um, so you've got strong winds on 112 and 113 in Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado getting jet blasted. And that, that Arctic front is just draped over those mountain ranges, um, depositing a lot of snow. All right, here's 117. So at this point, we're dealing with that north-northwest type of flow pattern, um, that storm coming out of BC, dropping down into Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, parts of Utah, potentially, and Colorado. And you can see it's just like a slide at the playground. It's going to bring that storm and that snow and lay it down over uh, those mountain ranges with that type of, uh, that's a very productive flow. All right, let's talk wind. So this is Friday 112 in Colorado. In the tan or that white shading, that's that's 60 plus. So we're dealing with 50 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts. Going to just absolutely be horrendous on the snowpack and avalanche risk. But um, you, that's Friday at 2 p.m. Those winds would continue Friday night and into Saturday morning. Similar winds in uh, the Wasatch and up in the Tetons. It's all because of the jet. Powerful jet streak coming through. All right, here's my updated... Uh, um, grand totals map. So this now accounts for the potential of three storms. Um, let's start in the Sierra. So you've got about two feet of snow coming. Um, in, in the Wasatch, about 70 inches coming between the end of today and 119. About 70 inches. In Colorado, probably one to three feet will do it for most places. And again, that's the, that's the total from three different storm systems. The one that's happening now the one after it, and then there's one on 116 through 119. In the Tetons, probably a couple of feet of additional snow, uh, and then about a foot of additional snow in Idaho, northwest Montana, quite a bit of additional snow in Oregon. You're going to get crushed tomorrow, 12 and 13, uh, with just blizzard conditions again. Um, so we're not done in Oregon. All right, let's break it down. I want to go in a little bit closer. So this is the front range of Colorado. you got Denver there. You're looking to the west-northwest through the foothills and then up to the Continental Divide. This was the same grand totals map, 110 through 119. Just looked at, Now we're looking at it from a 3D perspective. And you can see it, about one to three feet of snow coming. Um, and that does include uh, A Basin, Loveland Ski Area, Winter Park, Longs Peak, Cameron Pass, Buff Pass, Steamboat, all the way back to Vail, Breck and uh, parts of Aspen and Snowmass, Crested Butte as well. All right, let's go by period here. So this is the rest of today through tomorrow. Probably four to eight inches additional from Snow Basin um, to Park City to Brighton up to Alta and Snowbird. Uh, probably four to eight inches for the Tetons of additional snow in Colorado, four to eight inches of snow on the way. And then you start to see the effects of the next storm system coming down. Look at that, a foot of snow in Oregon tomorrow as things start to ramp up again in Oregon. Okay, uh, here is 112 through 115. This is a big period. Powerful orographics, high snow ratios, cold air, lots of efficiency, that front draped right over the Wasatch. We could accumulate 50 inches in this period alone in Little Cottonwood Canyon. Uh, one to two feet in Colorado, especially in western and northwest Colorado, and then some of that spills uh, right down over the top of the Continental Divide. Uh, anywhere in purple is a foot plus, so that's a, that's a lot of places. Uh, in California during that period, you've got one to, well, it's about 10 to 20 inches is what it is. And then quite a bit of snow up for uh, Bachelor and Timber, well, especially Bachelor, uh, with potentially three feet of snow. Timberline's a little bit out of the, out of the flow with that one. 
All right, let's do third period. So 116 to 119. This is that north-northwest flow pattern, that final storm system. Good snow for BC, parts of uh, central and northern Idaho, Montana, about a foot for the Tetons and potentially 6 to 10 inches for the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Now, this is the period with lowest confidence in the forecast. We're going to have to see exactly where the storm sets up and how the jet sets up because that's going to determine, you know, where the heaviest snow is deposited orographically. Okay. In the northeast, so the numbers have gone down, and here's why. So the storm on 112-113 is very similar to the storm, the power of the bomb cyclone that just went through. 70-mile-an-hour winds, heavy snow at the onset, changing over to a rain-snow mix, so that cuts down on accumulation. The storm I was banking on, the final storm, 116 to 117, the track has shifted down to the south a little bit, so that pulls the heaviest snow out of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine to some degree, but still looking for anywhere from 8 to maybe 16 inches of snow for most places. All right, guys, that's going to do it. We'll end on the grand total map again here. Still a lot of snow yet to go across the west with over a foot from most major mountain ranges easily um, through 119. Always appreciate you guys tuning in here and take care.